Gas turbine engines, unlike reciprocating ones, have distinct sections for intake, compression, combustion, and exhaust, which operate all at once without interrupting each other. These engines are made up of essential parts like the air inlet, compressor, combustion chamber, turbine, exhaust section, accessories, and various systems needed for starting, lubrication, fuel supply, and other functions. Each gas turbine engine shares the same major components, but the names for these parts can differ slightly between different engine manufacturers. It's like calling the same thing by different names, which you'd see in maintenance manuals. The type of compressor the engine uses plays a big role in how the engine is built. That's why the design of the engine can vary based on the kind of compressor it's designed for. There are four primary types of gas turbine engines used for aircraft. Turbofan, turboprop, turboshaft, and turbojet. The term turbojet used to be a blanket term for any gas turbine engine in planes. But over time, other types were developed to deal with issues like noise and fuel consumption, especially in the speed range where airliners fly, around 0.8 Mach. Nowadays, almost all big planes use turbofan engines because they're quieter and more fuel efficient in this speed range. The turbofan engine isn't just a simple upgrade. It's a whole different design. It uses a big fan or a set of fans at the front, and these fans produce most of the engine's thrust. Some turbofan engines have more than one shaft, which means they have two sets of compressors and turbines. These two shaft engines work with what they call spools, one for high pressure stuff and the other for low pressure stuff. It's like having two sets of gears driving different parts of the engine. There are low and high bypass turbofan engines. The bypass ratio is all about how much air goes around the engine's core. And this ratio is crucial because it tells you how much air the engine uses versus how much bypasses the core. Ever heard of turboprop engines? They're gas turbine engines that turn a propeller through a gearbox. They're really efficient when the plane's speed is between 300 to 400 mas and can handle shorter runways. Most of the engine's energy goes into driving the propeller and the rest gets turned into thrust. Then there's the turboshaft engine. It's not for pushing planes through the sky. Instead, it's all about transferring horsepower to a shaft, like the one in a helicopter transmission or as an APU in planes. APUs are super handy on the ground, providing power and air, and serve as a backup generator in flight. These engines come in different shapes, sizes, and power ranges depending on what they're used for. The air entrance into a gas turbine engine is a critical element. It's designed to guide incoming air smoothly to the compressor, minimizing energy loss due to drag or pressure changes. A smooth, turbulence-free airflow into the compressor is key for optimal operating efficiency. The inlet design significantly impacts aircraft performance by boosting the ratio of compressor discharge pressure to inlet pressure. This ratio is known as the compressor pressure ratio, calculated as the outlet pressure divided by the inlet pressure. The amount of air flowing through the engine depends on three main factors. The compressor speed, measured in revolutions per minute, the aircraft's forward speed, and the density of the surrounding air. Different types of gas turbine engines require specific turbine inlets. For instance, high-bypass turbofan engines have distinct inlets compared to turboprops or turboshafts. Large gas turbine-powered aircraft commonly utilize turbofan engines, often mounted on wings, nacelles, or sometimes the vertical fin. The turbofan inlet, typically bolted to the engine's front, is crucial because it's the initial contact point for incoming air. To prevent ice chunks from forming on the inlet's leading edge and potentially damaging the fan, anti-icing measures are essential. Warm air bled from the engine's compressor is directed through the inlet to prevent ice formation. Inlets may also include sound-absorbing materials to reduce fan noise, making the engine quieter. Turboprops and turboshafts may use inlet screens to filter out ice or debris and incorporate deflector vanes and heated inlet lips to prevent ice formation and large particles from entering the engine. In military aircraft, divided entrances allow shorter ducts, minimizing pressure drops due to skin friction. These aircraft can attain speeds surpassing Mach 1, but the airflow through the engine must remain subsonic. To avoid damaging the engine, airflow is controlled using convergent and divergent-shaped ducts that ensure the air drops to subsonic speeds before entering. Supersonic inlets play a crucial role in decelerating incoming air to below Mach 1 before it enters the engine, safeguarding against destructive supersonic airflow. The accessory section in a gas turbine engine serves vital functions essential for engine operation and aircraft control. Its primary role involves providing space for mounting necessary accessories that manage and control the engine. 
Typically, it accommodates various aircraft-related components like electric generators and hydraulic pumps. Additionally, it functions as an oil reservoir or sump and houses gear systems for accessory drives and reductions. Arranging and driving accessories in gas turbine engines have historically posed challenges. Turbofans commonly feature driven accessories mounted on the accessory gearbox, usually located at the engine's bottom. While the placement of these accessory cases may vary, turboprops and turboshafts often position them towards the engine's rear. Despite potential differences in construction and names, the components within the accessory section of gas turbine engines serve the same fundamental purpose. The primary elements of the accessory section include the accessory case and the gear train housed within it. The accessory case typically features machined mounting pads for the engine-driven accessories. The gear train, enclosed within this case, is driven by the engine's high-pressure compressor through an accessory drive shaft gear coupling. This coupling splines with a gear in the gearbox and the high-pressure compressor, providing suitable drive speeds for each engine accessory. The accessory case may also double as an oil reservoir or contain an oil tank, often equipped with a sump located beneath the front bearing support. This sump serves to drain and scavenge oil used for lubricating bearings and drive gears. The accessory case is designed with tubing or passages to facilitate lubricating oil distribution on the gear train and supporting bearings. Due to the high operating revolutions per minute RPM, of the engine rotor, the gear reduction ratios within the accessory section are relatively high. The mounting pad bores within the accessory case house ball bearings that support the accessory drives. These bearings play a crucial role in ensuring the smooth operation of the accessories mounted on the engine. Compressor section. The compressor section in a gas turbine engine does quite a lot. Its main job is to make sure there's enough air to fuel the burners for combustion. So it takes in air from the inlet duct and pumps up its pressure before sending it off to the burners at just the right pressure and amount needed. This section also supplies what's called bleed air for various tasks in both the engine and the aircraft itself. This bleed air is drawn from different pressure stages within the compressor. They've got these tiny openings in the compressor case. These are the bleed ports. And depending on the job, they tap into the right stage to get the air at the needed pressure or temperature. Usually they pull air from the final stage because that's where the pressure and temperature are at their peak. Sometimes this high pressure air needs cooling, especially if it's being used for things like cabin pressurization or anything where too much heat would be a hassle. In those cases, it gets sent through an air conditioning unit before it heads into the cabin. This bleed air does a lot of different things. It's used to pressurize and control the temperature in the cabin to deace or prevent ice buildup, to start up engines, and to power auxiliary drive units. Now, when it comes to compressors, there are two main types used in gas turbine engines, centrifugal flow and axial flow. The centrifugal flow compressor works by grabbing incoming air and spinning it outwardly using centrifugal force. On the other hand, the axial flow compressor squeezes the air while it keeps moving in the same direction, which helps save energy by avoiding unnecessary turns. Each component in these compressors has its own role in getting that air compressed and ready for the combustion stage. And when they talk about a stage in a compressor, it means a step where the air's pressure goes up. The centrifugal flow compressor is made up of a few key parts. There's the impeller, also called the rotor the diffuser, which is like a stator, and the compressor manifold. These compressors are pretty good at pushing up pressure per stage, sometimes up to around 8.1. But they've got a bit of a limit. They tend to stick to just two stages because of efficiency concerns. Now let's dive into what these parts do. The impeller is like the heart of this compressor. It's usually made of forged aluminum alloy, all heat treated and smoothed out to make sure the airflow is smooth and not too turbulent. It's usually made in one piece, as you can see in figure 146. Now here's a cool thing about impellers. There are two types, single entry and double entry. The single entry impeller, shown in figure 147, is more straightforward in how it gets its airflow. It's a bit better at catching air, but it ends up needing a larger diameter to move the same amount of air as the double entry type. That means the whole engine gets a bit bigger. For the double entry type, there's something called a plenum chamber that's part of the setup. This chamber is important because the air has to enter the engine almost at right angles to the engine axis. So the air needs to surround the compressor at a positive pressure before getting in. Sometimes this chamber even has these things called blow-in doors. They open up when the engine needs more air, like during ground operation and close up automatically during flight. 
Moving on to the diffuser, it's like an annular chamber with veins that guide the air from the impeller into the manifold. These veins are there to make sure the air keeps as much energy from the impeller as possible and reaches the right pressure and velocity for the combustion chambers. Check out figure to see how the airflow moves through the diffuser and into the manifold. The compressor manifold, part of which is in figure, is what directs the air from the diffuser into the combustion chambers. Each chamber gets its own outlet port, and there's a compressor outlet elbow bolted onto each port. These elbows help guide the airflow from a radial direction to an axial one, making sure everything's in the right direction for combustion. Sometimes these elbows have turning vanes inside to keep the airflow smooth and efficient. You can take a look at figure to see how it all comes together. Axial Flow Compressor Let's break down the axial flow compressor. It's got two main parts, the rotor and the stator. The rotor has blades fixed on a spindle. These blades push air backward, sort of like a propeller because of how they're angled and shaped. As the rotor spins super fast, it sucks air in at the compressor inlet and then zips it through a bunch of stages. Each stage in the compressor makes the air get more compressed and it speeds it up through several stages too. Now here's where the stator comes in. It's got rows of veins fitted inside a casing. These veins hang around close to the rotor blades at each stage. The stator veins don't move. They help boost the air pressure and guide it to the next stage in just the right way. Plus, they help the compressor blades work better by getting the air direction spot on. In this video, you'll see how the rotor and stator fit together in a typical axial flow compressor. At the start, there might be something called an inlet guide vane assembly that guides the air into the first rotor blades at the perfect angle. These veins give the incoming air a swirl that makes the compressor work more efficiently. And at the other end of the compressor, there are stator veins that straighten out the airflow to make it smooth and not turbulent. The compressor casing is pretty important too. It's not just a housing. It also helps support the stator veins and guides the air's path. It also gives a way to take out air from the compressor for various uses. The stator veins are made tough, usually from steel that's resistant to erosion and corrosion. Sometimes they're enclosed in a band to make things simpler. The compressor blades are usually made of stainless steel or titanium for the later stages. They're attached to the rotor in a couple of ways, either with a bulb type or fir tree method. The blade tips are specially designed to prevent damage to the blades or the housing if things get a bit loose or if there's some trouble with the bearings. The length of the blades changes from the beginning to the end of the compressor. As the working space gets smaller towards the end, the blades need to adjust in length. This helps keep the airflow steady through the compressor. Now let's talk about the two configurations of these axial compressors, the single rotor spool and the dual rotor spool. The single rotor uses some cool tricks like variable guide vanes to control the airflow, while the dual rotor has separate compressors for different parts of the engine. Both types of compressors have their perks and downsides. Centrifugal flow compressors, for instance, are pretty efficient and lightweight but take up more space and lose some efficiency between stages. Axial flow compressors are space savers and work straight through, but they're a bit trickier and costly to make and start up with more power. So each has its pros and cons, depending on the engine size and type. 